treatment remains an important option for patients with lung cancer. We have one radiotherapy and one surgical paper to discuss. First one is Dr. Suresh Sinan, he's a radiation oncologist here at the Free University of Amsterdam Medical Center. And he will discuss that elderly Dutch lung patients survival improved by new treatment options in the period between 2003 and 2009. Thank you, uh, Professor Van Schil. Uh, our uh, study concentrated on the outcomes in elderly patients in Netherlands in a defined period 2003 to 2009 and the reason was that the elderly represent the fastest growing group of patients with lung cancer even in a major western country with comprehensive health care coverage we found recently that 40 percent of patients aged 75 and above were untreated for a stage 1 lung cancer simply because they were considered unfit to undergo surgery which is standard of care and because the conventional radiotherapy had poor outcomes and patients were often unwilling to attend daily for six to seven weeks untreated the five-year survival is less than about five percent is a serious diagnosis and not to treat is an important issue some have argued including at these meetings that these patients are so frail that it's not worth the effort or to justify treat, treat, treating these patients. So we've had an interest in underutilization of treatment options in the elderly, as you've heard from the previous speaker. So what we did was we introduced this treatment option called stereotetic ablative radiotherapy, which is very high precision outpatient treatment, which has been in multi-center trials in Europe and North America shown to achieve local control rates of 95% or higher. This is a treatment which requires a patient to attend our hospital um, and the expected parking charges will be about for one hour because he'll be in, out, all planning and treatment completed. It was first introduced in 2003 and we addressed the question, has survival improved in these patients between in that period? So why did we do an epidemiological study? As you've heard, clinical trials are often not feasible in fail elderly patients because of the way they are designed. They tend to select represent, uh, uh, subgroups of patients who may not reflect what is happening in the population. On the other hand, a population-based study has the advantage of reflecting real-world outcomes. There's less selection bias less stringent criteria and if one cannot perform a randomized trial this is a good way to evaluate the introduction of new and uh, expensive technology the data was made available through the Dutch cancer registry which co has comprehensive information of all patients uh, treated uh, with the, made diagnosed with lung cancer our population is 16 million they collect all the information on surgery but not on the type of radiotherapy of nearly a million uh, Dutch residents, 4,600 developed a stage one lung cancer in the period, study period. The first period was after the introduction of facilities like PET scans, but before stereotactic radiotherapy was introduced. And the last period was when it became fully available in the whole of Netherlands. So between nine to 11 centers out of 22 radiotherapy centers were delivering this treatment. We had national quality assurance programs on how uh, all aspects of the process were defined. Our key findings were that in this period, in the elderly, the median survival of all patients rose by nearly eight months, from 16.4 months before SABRE to 24 months in the period after SABRE. Of note is the fact that the increase was most apparent in radiotherapy patients where the uh, rise was 9.3 months and now it's reached 26 months in the last period. Survival after surgery also improved and we noticed that the mortality of surgery decreased during this period. You could ask whether we are treating a different group of patients. Has something happened? Perhaps better treatment of diabetes or better treatment of uh, high cholesterol or other supportive care but there was no evidence for this because if you were untreated, your survival was just as dismal in 2001 as it is in 2009. To conclude, we saw large survival improvements in patients aged 75 and above 
which coincided with the introduction of Sabre, ablative radiotherapy, and there was an impact of improved surgical outcomes as well. We believe that further survival improvements can be expected as stereotactic ablative radiotherapy was only used in about 75% maximum of patients undergoing radiotherapy. We have now much more data for stereotactic radiotherapy on tumors which are located more centrally and also larger tumors. So we expect that when this technique is applied to those subgroups, the utilization of stereotactic radiotherapy will increase to about 90% or higher in these elderly patients. We believe elderly patients who are fit to undergo surgery should also be informed of the availability of Sabre as an alternative curative modality, particularly as the 30-day and 90-day mortality in patients undergoing surgery in the last period, which has got the best results, were 3.9% and 7.0% respectively. The first speaker alluded to the role of adjuvant chemotherapy uh, after surgery in a landmark Canadian trial. And the same trial showed that patients aged 75 and above receive no benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy. So we believe that this is a very uh, novel finding in that expensive high technology applied in an, for outpatient care in a nationwide basis has resulted in survival gains of nine months in the Netherlands. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sinan. Are there any questions? Yes, please. <clears throat> Hello, Sasha Tristak. I'm from Medscape Oncology. Can you just describe for the patient what it means to undergo yeah. um, SABRE as opposed to conventional radiotherapy? I think it's six weeks versus yeah. two weeks. Is it something like that? So the, the uh, initial process is the same in the Netherlands. A multidisciplinary tumor board decides the patient is candidate for this treatment. The patient's consultation is the same. The scan process is the same, so they attend uh, consultation, they have a CT scan, a four-dimensional CT scan. What is different is that they only are, come between three times, three times in case it's a very small tumor in the middle of the lung, five times is a bigger tumor, or eight times. They lie on the same equipment instead of uh, 35 times, seven, five, uh, five times a week, so now they come uh, on every other day, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. So they lie on the treatment unit, but they lie for about 20 to 25 minutes. So the conventional may take about 15 minutes. So what happens is that we make a scan, a CT scan at the treatment table to make sure that the tumor position is where it's meant to be. And with the current treatment delivery, it's completed in less than five minutes. So the radiation linear accelerator rotates around your body twice and you're finished. Of course, there are different technology, different manufacturers, and some can take up to an hour. But the essential thing is that you uh, come fewer times, you have the same preparatory uh, process, you lie a little bit longer on the treatment table, but you only come four times in total, once for the consultation, three times for the treatment, if it's a small tumor. And those are the predominantly treated ones. And how does that compare with convention? Can you go to the microphone, please, because this is recorded, yes. So that's, sorry, that's for Sabre. Yeah. So can you just say um, how conventional looks? Is that six weeks? How many, it is how generally many six weeks. Um, you have now the same image guidance possibilities uh, to verify the position of the tumor on a daily basis, but it's very cost ineffective to do that for 35 times when you can do it in three times. The second point is that we have in the past done the conventional and the likelihood of the tumor coming back was about between 30 to 50 percent of the time. It could be that in the past there was, we were less good in targeting, so with better targeting the local failure after 35 uh, fraction radiotherapy may be lower, but the question is, is it a cost-effective way to use such an expensive resource? Um. To what extent do you think these data speak to um, doing a Sabre versus surgery in patients who were 75 or older who are surgical candidates? Um, I'm not sure if I understood your question. You said you were talking about trial of outside the trial context. 
just these data? Yeah. What we did in another study, which has not uh, been uh, presented yet, is we went back to patients who had completed both treatments, tried to interview them and ask, what was the, did they have a desire to be involved in the treatment pro planning process and how did they reach the decision and whether they had um, regrets? What we find in the Netherlands is the lung physicians are very aware of this option. That's why the number of patients referred are increasing. But patients are, have very limited access to this treatment, uh, very little knowledge on the internet here and in North America about the specifics of this treatment. So we are now develop, working together with the professor of patient decision making to dissect out which are the patients who actually want to play a more active role, which want to know this. But our key conclusion is that if you do not tell the patient that there is more than one curative option and the patient comes into a team which says you have a lung cancer, the only curative standard treatment is to take it out, that's what you do, and they have no way of knowing there's an alternative and to do the trade-offs. So the adjuvant chemotherapy trials, if you unexpectedly during surgery discover a lymph node, may give you a survival benefit of about five years, about five percent. But if your expected mortality is, say, 7%. These are trade-offs which the patients of today and their families may want to consider. So I think it, our focus now is to improve access of information to patients to enable them to be uh, participate in the decision making. We are not there yet. We have time for two smaller questions. I think in the back there was a question, no? Yeah, the question, yes. <coughs> relevant because I, I'm Shirida from Oncology TV. I, I, uh, it's of course about elderly patients, but I was just wondering what is known about the acute and late toxicity of this uh, technique? The acute toxicity is very well described. We have also, we and others have made patients fill in questionnaires. About the half of patients may have uh, symptoms of tiredness in the up to three months, but it's not a persisting uh, problem. Um, when larger tumors are treated, you can get symptoms of so-called radiation pneumonitis, but the incidence is generally less than 5% in the big multicenter trials, so 95% do not have it. And we followed up patients for up to five years, and about, um, I think about 3 to 4% have them have rib fractures when their tumor is close to the chest wall. So the longer-term um, follow-up data is just being published in this year and late last year, so that probably explains why there's not much available in the patient domain, but still in the medical domain. No more questions?